Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, if you look at the Sunday papers, it's absolutely clear the political season has restarted properly. There's the Observer with that NHS story that you were hearing about as it splashed. And we're going to be talking to Chris Hopson, the NHS bod behind this story, after the news review, I should say. Feel-good factor from the Paralympics and grammar schools there. Grammar schools, the splash in the Sunday Times. But also, very interesting story here, HS2 is in trouble again. Its boss has just quit. It's spiralling out of control, think many people, in terms of funding. So that's another big challenge for Theresa May. Uh, the VAS story on the front page of the Sunday Times as well. And the VAS story all over the Mail on Sunday. Uh, Keith Vaz's wife has given an interview. I forgive the betrayal, she says. And then again, the Sunday Mirror, Vaz offered to fly escorts around the world. Now, there are many, many other stories in the Sunday papers which we will properly cover, or some of them anyway. Um, we're we're going to start with grammar schools because this is the story that runs through virtually every single paper. Peter, there is a, a column by a certain Peter Hitchens on the same subject in the Mail on Sunday, I notice. Yes, rejoicing over the extraordinary fact that Mrs May has actually copied me. What I really enjoyed most of all was her using my long-tried slogan uh, that, that uh, we already have school selection in this country, but by house price, something I've been saying for longer than I can remember, uh, which completely demolishes the argument that, s that selection uh, will be reintroduced if you bring grammar schools back. It'll be selection by ability instead. So you, you think it filtered its way into the Prime Minister's subconscious? Somehow or other. I, I never thought she'd do it. She used to be rather coy about even admitting she'd been to a grammar school. I, I see the hand of Mr Nick Timothy, her advisor in this, who, who is a grammar school boy and, and very keen on it. And this is going to be a really big event in terms of education. The Sunday Times has got a big splash on the, the number they, of grammar They have, and they, they actually say that, uh, that, that councils are, are, are beginning to draw up plans for new grammar schools, which I very much hope they do. And this will be the test of it, whether people can actually open new academically selective schools in large numbers and whether they can be made to succeed in the Britain of today. I think it is very possible, but it's going to be a fight because there are an awful lot of people with very strong interests who are opposed to it. Absolutely. And there is, a, there is a big division inside the Tory party. Polly Toynbee, you're, you yourself must be pretty dismayed by this, I guess. I am. I mean, Peter is the great guru of Bring Back the 50s, so I'm not surprised you're in no, seventh I'm heaven over, uh, over this. But what's really important about the British education system is that the top half does pretty damn well and has done better and better. The problem in the British education system is in the bottom half. Mm. And bringing Mac grammar schools does nothing about the tail end problem, and particularly the bottom 20%. And is this what the Observer story leads you to? Well, very interesting Observer story. The head of the uh, private schools association is saying that it's going to be a huge boost for private schools because what happens is when you have segregation, those middle class children who don't get into grammar schools don't want to go to secondary modern so there is a big boost this in sending them to private schools. Uh, there's also a big boost in primary private schools so that people get tuition that is the most to pass the 11th. That is the most right. extraordinary nonsense, though, because the, the, the complete remaking of the, of the private schools in this country, many of which were on their way to extinction in the early 60s, uh, was the cl closing of grammar schools. And it was when, they, it was when they closed. Well, I, I, I was privately educated. I remember the great surge of interest into, in, into uh, particularly right. private schools. In, 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 in recent years, in recent years, in recent years, in Germany, where they have never got rid of, of, of selective, academically selective state schools, there are practically no private in schools. In recent years, ever. Because, because, of the success, because of the increasing sorry. success <laughs> under both Labour and the Tories, the better results from state schools, comprehensives, no. The proportion of they're children not, going to private okay. schools is actually okay. poor. La, 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 better okay. results Jeez, than devalued. Like you are educated no. in Germany. I don't Indeed. know if you have and a, the a reason parallel. Why the private schools never got anywhere in Germany is because if you in, went to a private school in Germany, it said your parents were very rich and you were so not with it that you couldn't even hack it in the state sector. So it's what you've got to culture. do is a different culture. I'm a Birmingham MP where the King Edward Foundation schools remained a complete combination of some fee paying, some non fee paying. They've now got 25% of their intake on, from school meals. They're opening university teaching schools, which support the schools in the weak areas. And the real problem, I Jeremy think, which Corbyn's we need to address, been talking as Jeremy today. Corbyn says in this, this article, is that we, we, we need to address investing in the children, fixing the classroom crisis, and making education at all levels accessible. In the West Midlands, we've got a shortage of 45,000 primary school places. Why pick 
an ideological argument at this stage, which to me does not address the problems on the ground, Be and that is capacity and not okay. enough teacher training. Because teacher. our national, our national um, failure has, has largely been the result of the collapse of good secondary education in the state system, and we need to address it. Okay. And if we don't address but it, our national failure question. will carry on getting worse. Peter, uh, Nikki Morgan, former Education Secretary, attacked the policy straight away, policy change, saying it was weird. Is there a real division inside the Tory party? Oh, yeah, most of, them, most of them couldn't care less. There are, there, many of them are privately educated, and many of them aren't particularly conservative and, and know little about, uh, about education. And they swallow all the stuff that Polly comes up about, about the tail end and right. all the rest of it. The truth is, nobody in the, in the British education system benefited from the grammar schools being destroyed. The people who were in them suffered. The people who, who were in secondary moderns didn't do substantially better in Congress. Politically, what's Sorry, Polly, really, I'd like to move on about from the politics schools. about this, though, I'd that like we to move thought on from that, that what, Theresa May was a safe pair of hands. She's done something remarkably reckless with the okay, grammar right, school policy. Let's move but on from grammar schools. I warned her we, we, have to, we, have to stop, we have to stop but grammar schools. For, no, we have to stop grammar schools now <laughs> because we'll get none of the other stories done. <laughs> and the NHS story is a really yes. important one, yeah. Polly Tony. This is very important because you have here uh, you know, a very senior figure who represents, who you're speaking to, Chris Hobson, who represents all of the, the main hospital providers, saying they can't continue like this, 80% of them in deep debt and being told they've got to bring those debts down and the funding is going to actually drop very severely in the two years before the next election. Either, and the public needs to know this, that either they, we need to ration services or they need to accept a much lower quality of, of standard. Um, it's time for people to realise that we can't keep going like this, it needs more money. The NHS has never had as lower level of funding uh, in terms of you know, increase so, each some year. Some people will say, Polly, that um, every year the NHS says there's a crisis and actually life goes on. This is a kind of pre-autumn statement piece of kind of financial shroud waving and we shouldn't take it too seriously. Well, I mean, it's, it, it's financial shroud waving in that the, the Treasury must be very alarmed that technically the, NH, the uh, Department of Health bust its budget, which is almost mm. unique this year. It would bust it hugely next year unless they get more money. I think that uh, it's not just shroud waving. I think it is, you're right that it's remarkable the NHS has done as well as it has but with after all, the funding it's uh, had. But after all, Gisela, the NHS is about to get £350 million a week more as we leave the EU. Well, first of all, we have to leave the EU, and I think we're going to come on to, to, to the thing that yeah. we've got to make leaving the EU happen. And until and unless we do, we can make none of these decisions. But, but I, once that I do happens, not, that money can go to the NHS. Well, th then you, I mean, I, I, you know, I was a health minister in the Blair government, and I know that the extra money to the NHS makes a real difference. Mm. But you also need to, to have some structural changes, which in terms around social care, because you, you cannot keep the There's two There's a story separate. in the Observer suggesting that the Brexit camp, that's people like yeah. you, have abandoned this pledge. No, because what do you see, and we come on to, you know, uh, Change Britain organization, in, in a sense, we were a cross-party group which said we want to leave the EU. That will give us the right to make choices and priorities. And for me, the priorities was the NHS, and you need to be in government to actually implement that. So let's so leave you, first. You, you and think then the we Tories who stood in front of that £350 million promise won't deliver on it? No, I think first of all we've got to leave, and then we can make the decision, and then to me and to many of us the priority is the okay. NHS. People okay. were cheated badly. Ian Duncan so Smith and a whole lot of people straight after the Brexit vote said, right. oh, we never really meant it. That big bus that you stood in yeah. front of, people believed there was going to be 350 million more, right. in well, which you, case we okay, wouldn't have the problem. Let's say the huge now. snakes 350 miles long would be, would be circling the country and we'd all be doomed and war would follow and none of that happened either. People okay. don't always tell the truth in campaigns. Peter, since we're now thoroughly on Brexit, you've got a Mail on Sunday story there about Boris Johnson, who is backing this new ginger group uh, of who... Uh, Gisela is yeah, the featuring, chair. Featuring Gisela, yeah, saying yes. that tr uh, supposedly trying to push Mrs May towards a, towards a hard Brexit rather than the, the very soft one, which I think a lot of people increasingly suspect she wants because every time anybody speaks about tough negotiating positions, she slaps them down. And there is a big problem here, which I think the French must have noticed by now, yes. that we can't make our minds what we want. The problem with the story, it seems to be, is that Boris Johnson's actual words aren't terribly striking or hardcore or inflammatory or indeed anything. Well, there is always that problem with Boris Johnson <laughs> when you analyse what he says rather than what he appears to but, be. Well, but what's but rather amazing is that you had David Davis for the first time standing up at the dispatch box in charge of these negotiations saying, as most improbable, we will stay in the single market. And number 10 had to slap him down saying, it's a personal view. Who, what minister has a personal view from the dispatch box? The chaos with, uh, you know, we've got Liam, we've got Liam mm. Fox as well right. rubbishing 
rubbishing British businessmen, yet he's meant to be representing them. Well, it's true. And, and we, have, we have, for the first time in our national history, got a policy without a government to implement it. The government, a government which does not believe in its principal policy, and this is going to cause endless acrobatics. For is many, that many why, Gisela, we now have <laughs> this morning a new organisation? Um, you can tell us about it and show us we, its website. We do indeed. It's, uh, it's, it's in the Sun, an article, in, and it essentially, the essence is whether you were a Remainer or were you a Leaver. The British people have decided to leave. And we now need to pull together to actually become doers. Because so is this it kind is of hold their feet to the fire? Is, is that the it, it is, purpose of the organisation? It is both things, to remind what the referendum was about. But much more importantly, you know, I, I'm probably one of the few people who have negotiated across Whitehall with the European Union mm. during the Constitution. I know that even when you've politically agreed, it does become technically very complex. And I think we need to bring together on the ideas, make sure that it gets implemented. But above all... The, the referendum did show some real divisions in this country. It, it, it really mm. flagged them up. So and I think for me, you what split is this the party, the country, and and right for, down the middle. Holly, and for Labour to be able to respond to the, all, the, all of these areas who voted to leave and that their yeah. needs are met, I think we need to come together and work in their interest okay. rather than trying to refine the referendum. There is no chance of coming together. There is going to be well, hard Brexiters and soft Brexiters. No, no, there are those of us, the 48%, who want to stay as close as possible to Europe. There is your lot, Boris's lot, and you may all be different amongst yourselves, who want a hard Brexit. Right. This is not you know, going to be this resolved. Is not the, the, bad, the Bad Losers is Party is going to do people. everything it can to try and stop this from happening and may well succeed. Listen to Polly, she may well be, I'm afraid, the voice of the future. <laughs> oh, now, there's, 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 there's a moment on the sofa that worries me. There's a moment on the sofa. I'm not <laughs> let's, let's, I, sorry, I, I want to do two a other stories. Uh, uh, you know, turnout. I'd like and I think we as politicians have a responsibility to bring people together, not like complain to, like about divisions and well, you, then fetch, uh, You've just been right. launching now, a more divisive group. Chaps. Why is it divisive? Chaps and chapesses. Let's do a couple more stories before we finish, if you don't mind. One is Liam Fox. Uh, fat and flabby British business. <laughs> Maybe he was right. I mean, is, is there a kind of slightly politically correct sense of outrage that everybody is expressing? Well, I'm, I'm, in, no, I'm, I'm in no position to attack anybody for being fat and flabby. <laughs> no, so. Nor me, fat and flabby. Right. But I think the idea that you're representing okay, British right, trade, right. you're going around okay. the world trying to get good deals, okay. and you actually say, oh, fr frankly, our business people are rubbish. That is not a good start. It's not helpful. OK, final story, I think, today. Peter, the political correctness story, which is the splash in the Sunday Telegraph and appears in Sunday Times and elsewhere. It, it is on the Christmas Sunday is threatened, we're told. Yeah, the Sunday Telegraph seems to me to have two rather better stories underneath this a uh, cabinet split over grammars and hs2 ring hs2 link rail chief departs but it's gone for this bizarre story about how christmas is threatened now i, I dislike political correctness as much as the next man and possibly more but i really do not feel that christmas is in grave danger okay. just at the moment all right thank you all very much Especially a fascinating September. paper review we got through the big stories at least I've been